What is up YouTube? Welcome back to another Morales tutorial video. In this video, we're going to check out the run contract function endpoint that the Morales API provides. What this endpoint allows you to do is run a given function on a contract on any EVM chain, given that the function is read only. So if we open up Etherscan over here, I have the cool cats NFT collection open. And if you jump over to the contract tab, you see we have a read contract and write contract. The write contract requires you to connect to Web3 as you'll have to send Ethereum because you'll be changing the state of the smart contract and in essence, the blockchain. But for read contract, you don't have to provide Ethereum as you're only reading data from the smart contract and that's why Morales can provide this API endpoint. For example, here, you can get the price, so the mint price of the NFTs when they were launched. You can get the token URI if you provide a token ID. So essentially what you're doing, you're just reading information that is stored on the smart contract. And what this run contract function endpoint allows you to do is essentially exactly this that Etherscan read contract tab allows you to do. So if you're excited for this, stay stuck in and I'll show you how to do this. Hey, I'm Jay, your Morales instructor from beautiful Finland. I got into crypto in 2020 and I've been building in the space ever since. In my free time, I enjoy running and at the gym and in the summer, you'll definitely find me at the golf course. Now let's get stuck in and learn about Web3. All right, so for this project, let's start from scratch. Here I have my IDE open, Visual Studio Code, and let's go ahead and initialize a Node.js project, npm init dash y. So now we have a package.json file. We can initialize a index.js file by running index.js. And this is where we'll write our logic. And then we have to install a few packages, npm i morales, of course, so we have Morales functionality and then dot env so we can get our Morales API key and store it safely in an env file. While those are installing, let's go ahead and make that env file. So dot env. And over here, what we can do is create a variable called Morales underscore key will be equal to, and here we'll have to input our Morales API key, which we can get from your Morales admin dashboard. So if you navigate to Google Chrome, here I have my Morales admin dashboard open. If you don't have a Morales account, you can go to morales.io and create yourself a free account. Then here in the sidebar, press Web3 APIs and you'll have your API key over here, which you can view, or you can just copy it. I'll copy it from here, then open back up Visual Studio Code and I'll paste it in here. And just for good practices, it's good to keep your API key safe. So I won't show it here and I'll just move to index.js here. All right, beautiful. And now our dependencies, Morales and .env have installed as well. So we can close down our terminal and start by importing Morales. So now we have access to the Morales functionality over here. And then let's also go ahead and require .env. So we have access to that API key we stored in this .env file over here. Now, finally, we also have to require the smart contract ABI we want to run contract functions from. And as you saw in this sample, we were playing around with the cool cats smart contract on Etherscan. So we can jump back into Etherscan, open up Google Chrome, open up the cool cats page on Etherscan and jump over to the contract. We can go over here in the code section, scroll all the way down to the bottom over here. And we have the contract ABI. ABI stands for application binary interface. And we can go ahead and copy that, jump back into Visual Studio Code, create a new file, call it, for example, abi.json. And in here, we can paste that. And by pressing shift option F on Mac, you can format it very nicely, like so save that when we can, for example, search command find get price. So here, for example, you see the details that the smart contract has for getting price. It takes no inputs, it's a function, and its state mutability is view. So it's a read-only function we can actually call using Morales. And as the output, it gives us a uint256, which is the minting price for these NFTs. And there's all these other functions as well, get approved, giveaway, et cetera, et cetera. But for now, let's focus on the get price function and we'll make our first call to that so we can see if we can get the mint price programmatically using Morales. So jump back into index.js. Now we can require this ABI file we just created like so. So now we have the ABI variable which has the application binary interface stored within it. Now let's go ahead and initialize Morales. We can do that by running morales.start and then you'll have to provide the API key we stored in the environment variables. So run process.env and then the variable name and we gave it the name Morales underscore key. So this just makes sure that Morales knows which account is using Morales functionality. And then after Morales is initialized, 
we can create a asynchronous function like so, where we can use the Morales EVM API util section to run a contract function. And whatever we get back from the API will store in this response variable. So response will be equal to await Morales dot EVM API dot utils dot run contract function. And now what parameters the run contract function endpoint takes, you have to provide at least a contract address, that's a requirement address. And for that, we can go back into Google Chrome. Here we have the cool cats NFT collection, and we have the contract over here. So we copy that address and paste that as the address over here for the parameters, then we want to define the function name from the ABI that we want to call. And we just checked out that there was a get price function, we can try other ones later. And then we have to, of course, define the ABI. So like so we brought in the ABI at the start over here. And that is how simple it is to do. So now if we go ahead and console log our response raw format, like so now if we run this index.js file, we should get the mint price for cool cats NFTs, save that. So open up our terminal over here, we can go ahead and clear this then run node index.js. And look at that, we got 0 0.02 Ethereum. So we here we have 16 zeros. And because Ethereum, of course, has 18 decimals, that means 0 0.02 Ethereum was the mint price. And that is the exact same result you would get on Etherscan. If you go over and read contracts, the get price function over here gets you 0 0.02 Ethereum. How cool is that? But now let's, let's see if we wanted to try another one of these. So if we go scroll down the token URI, which we looked at at the start, you have to provide a parameter token ID. And let's provide, for example, for query that. And then you get this string where the token metadata is stored. So let's try and do this because we have the ABI already in our Visual Studio code file. So let's close down our terminal. So all we have to do is change the function name to the function token URI, and we can actually do a sanity check, copy this token URI, open up our ABI and find in here if there actually is this token URI function, and we do have it, it outputs us with a string, it's a state mutability of view, so a read only function, and it takes an input of name token ID. So that is one extra feature we have to provide as parameters to our API call. So over here, go ahead and type in params, then go ahead and add an object with token ID. And then you can provide the token ID you wish to get the token URI for. So let's do four, for example. And that is all you have to do save that we can close down this find window and go ahead and open up our terminal again. And what we can do is run the same index.js script. And this time we should get like you see over here, the token URI for token ID four. So if we copy that jump into Google Chrome, we can paste that into our navigation bar over here. And this gives us the metadata for token ID four. for example, if you want to see the image of the token, you can copy this from over here in the metadata, paste it into your navigation bar, and it gives you token ID four of the cool cats NFT collection. So that is basically all you need to know of how you can run view only contract functions using Morales. Of course, if you want to do it on a different chain, you just provide the chain parameter. Or if you want to look at a different contract, you just provide the, the contract address over here and that contract ABI. But now let me show you some cool functionality you could do with this. For example, with the get price functionality, you got the mint price for this NFT collection. So if you go back a few steps, like so now our response is the 0 0.02 Ethereum, as that was the mint price. But using Morales, you can actually get the current floor for an NFT collection. And you can do that very simply if you check out the documentation using the get NFT lowest price endpoint. And all you have to provide is the address. So I'm storing this value in the res low variable. And what we can do then is over here, create two variables, the floor price and the mint price, like so. So our floor price will be from the second response, the price key, and the mint price will be the response from our run contract function. And then what we can do is in our console, just log something interesting, like for example, the mint price, the current floor, and because we have these two details, we can calculate the multiplier. If you're still holding an NFT from mint, how many multiples your investment would currently stand at. So let me just console log them here over here, we can delete this last console log over here. So what we have here is the mint price. And what we're doing is we're 
taking the mint variable, dividing it by the 18 decimals, then the current floor, same thing, we're taking the floor variable, dividing it by 18 decimals, and then the current multiplier since mint will be the floor price divided by the mint price. And then we just add a X to indicate it's a multiplier. Let's save this and see what result this gives. So open up our terminal once again and run node index.js. And look at that, the mint price was 0.02 Ethereum, the current floor is 1.89 Ethereum, so the current multiplier since mint is 94.5x. So if you bought a cool cat at mint and you're still holding it, the floor price would indicate you could sell it at a 94x multiple. And that is the power of Morales. You can run contract functions, you can get the lowest price of NFTs, and you can do cool calculations like this and this is just scratching the surface. I really hope this video was useful for you and you find cool ways to run contract functions on read-only functions from any smart contract on EVM chains. I'll catch you in the next one.